So I got up to use the restroom, and then this is what I came back to. <laughs> Little thieves, but they're so cute. I cannot be mad. Hello, my beautiful internet friends. I have a weird story to share with you guys. This has never happened after surgery for me. And uh, before I dive in, I did want to let anyone know who is squeamish or easily grossed out or anything like that about blood or incisions or wounds or any topic like that, this may not be the best video for you because we will be covering topics like that and also showing some footage around those things. Fair warning. So enough intro. Last night was really odd. Uh, I went to sleep, everything was normal, and I was icing my leg. Don't fall asleep while icing things, by the way, guys, but it was like there was a lot of padding, so I was not in any harm of actually damaging anything. And I woke up about 2 a.m. to my fingers covered in blood. That in itself is just kind of a weird experience to have. And I looked down, what I saw resting on this pillow here, which is where I keep my leg elevated to sleep at night, was my ice pack wrapped perfectly around my bandage, which was still in like a perfect circle, just sitting on my pillow. While my leg, which needs to be inside those bandages protected for the next 14 days, was free as a bird, free as a kite, free as a however that saying goes. And uh, my fingers were covered in blood because I was like holding my leg in my sleep. Uh, because of the medications I'm on, I sleep super, super deep. And so I think I probably accidentally pulled my leg out because they got really loose or something like that and then was like holding it in my sleep because it hurt and then my fingers got all bloody and stuff. And anyways, I woke up and kind of freaked out a little bit. Um, rushed to the restroom, got my hands clean, cleaned the wound the best I could, and then called the doctor because here's the thing, the nurses stressed at the hospital and in discharge instructions that it was really important to keep it covered, clean, and dry until the incisions came out. Sometimes with surgeries, you can actually take you know, bandages off, you can change it yourself, things like that. This was not a surgery like this. This needed to stay covered. But I talked to them and everything will be fine. They said it's not a big deal and so we got some gauze pads and I'm actually waiting for Brian to bring, bring back a couple more supplies but in the meantime I do want to have this changed because the only gauze I have on it right now is old gauze which is not good gauze to have on any wounds so I thought I would change it with you guys and show you what it looks like because I personally think that surgical sites are interesting because I've had so many of them but like I said if you are easily grossed out or anything like that this is not going to be your cup of tea this is my surgical site four days post-op it actually looks pretty good all things considered yeah, so let's take a look. All right, so my hands are thoroughly washed and don't you love how Cakes is still in the frame back there? One bummer with this is that there's not nearly as much padding and pressure on it anymore, so it's a little bit more uncomfortable, but it's not that big of a deal. And it is actually not that bad. I'm also not nearly as skilled of a leg wrapper it sounds weird, as doctors are. And so there's like lumps in the ace bandage when I wrap it around. I've got to learn how to wrap the end of my leg a little bit better. It does look like it bled a little bit, which is not a great thing. Are you guys ready? All right. So it looks like they pretty much just added on to what I already had. So this and this is what we're looking at, guys. If you're wondering what the heck this is, that is called a scar in vagination, I believe. It's basically, that was an incision as well at one point and it basically folded in on itself. Um, I'm hoping that as time goes on, that'll kind of work its way out. That can be caused by, you know, like pressure and swelling as well, but I think it kind of looks weird and I'm not a super big fan of it. But honestly guys, I think it looks pretty good. You can definitely see that it's like swollen and stuff, but that's to be expected four days after surgery. I've been, like I said, keeping it iced and elevated, which helps a lot because it's really not even that swollen. So all things considered, I think it's actually looking pretty good. Now for a fresh gauze and we'll wrap this sucker back up. So aside from a pretty eventful night, I think things are going really well. I feel a lot stronger today than I have. I'm not quite as woozy and out of it, but I'm definitely still taking it easy. So that has been today's and last night's adventures. And here's a little bit from yesterday. So I've been resting all morning. It's now uh, one o'clock and I have this momentary surge of energy. So I thought I would capitalize on it. Day three three after surgery, it's Saturday now. One task done for the entire day, which is to switch over things from my old camera bag to my new one. And after surgery, you're like supposed to do 
things. You're not just supposed to lay on the couch all day. I still feel like crap and uh, need to ice and elevate my leg most of the time, but I also don't want to lay on the couch all day, so I'm gonna interact with you guys while I get this thing done. So I did want to talk real quick about waking up from anesthesia. If you watched my like how to prepare for surgery video, I talked about how I've had some real issues waking up from anesthesia before. Um, I have PTSD, which is not a lot of fun, and uh, I've, I've had it for years. I've been in counseling for years. I've worked through a lot of it. It's gotten a lot better, but one place where it definitely shows up is waking up from anesthesia. I've had a horrible time with um, panic attacks, waking up hyperventilating, like waking up in a full-fledged, cannot speak, cannot breathe, cannot, don't recognize where I am. I'm like in a flashback kind of situations from anesthesia. And when you're coming out of surgery like that, not a great place to be. I feel like I need to send the anesthesiologist a personal thank you gift bag and a medal because he talked to me for a while before surgery, really listened to my concerns and said, I totally get it. Um, he also heard what I said about having like uncontrollable pain waking up from my amputation surgery and said, you know what, we're gonna modify some things with what we do with you in anesthesia and make sure that you wake up as easy as possible. It was funny because a couple days before, Brian and I went and watched Five Feet Apart and in that movie, someone wakes up from anesthesia and it's like they're waking up from taking a nap. They're just like, oh, hi guys, basically, you know? And I made fun of that because like no one wakes up from anesthesia like that. Like you're super groggy, you're super out of it, you're emotional or whatever. And I was complaining to Brian about it, but that was legitimately how I woke up from anesthesia this time. That has never happened to me in the dozen times that I have gone under and come out, even before I had PTSD, like that never happened. He did an incredible job. Something that also happened this time around with waking up from anesthesia is that the same nurse that was with me when I woke up from my amputations with me this time. Now, like I told you guys, when I woke up from amputation, it was horrible. It was honestly a traumatic experience. Um, I was like in screaming pain for hours and they could not get things under control to the point where, and this nurse told me this, she had told the doctor I it, like refused to give me any more medication because she thought that she might kill me. She thought that I might OD or stop breathing. I think I told you guys before, like I saw the records of all the medications they gave me during that time and they gave me, they gave me a lot of drugs, but eventually they did get the pain under control. She remembered that day very, very clearly, which kind of surprised me because that was months ago and I'm one name on a list of so many people who wake up from surgeries every day in that hospital. It's a big hospital, but she had seen my name on that schedule the morning and um, was assigned to be with me, which I thought was really cool because she had been with me before. So this time when I woke up from surgery, she was prepared for whatever could happen because she knew that I could wake up in a panic. She knew that I could wake up with uncontrolled pain and she was ready to be there for it. Thankfully, neither one of those things happened. I thought it was so sweet that she cared so much. She let me come out of anesthesia very, very slowly, which I think was a really important piece of how well it went. If you ever watch this, I just wanna say thank you for being an amazing nurse. And uh, actually, I'm starting to feel pretty hopeful. I thought it was funny. You know, I think in the video where I talked about feeling hopeless before surgery, I talked about feeling like something always goes wrong that's just like, you know, out of the ordinary and it's just like a medical mystery and blah, blah, blah. And it occurred to me yesterday when I was editing the video that I released about how surgery went. I'm brandishing weapons at you guys again. I am so sorry. Anyways, in that video, I talked about how my doctor actually told my mom and my husband I was like a trailblazer and that he'd never really seen this kind of thing in particular develop before, so on and so forth. And so it really was like a not a medical mystery, but just a medical WTF. And you know, I think on the one hand, I could have like, heard that and been like, see, I told you, I told you something always goes wrong and it's always terrible and blah, blah, blah. But I, I, I actually didn't take it that way. And I was, I guess, proud of myself in a way for just being able to be like, taking it in stride and, and just be thankful that they were able to take care of it. And he doesn't see a reason for the issues that I was having to come back. So let's hope that's the case. Ooh, this looks fancy. Like I'm starting to feel like things will maybe be okay. And I'm also starting to feel that like, you know what, even if they aren't 100% okay, even if we run into more bumps in the road, even if more stuff happens, that's okay too, because sometimes that's how things work. And I am so freaking glad that this surgery went well. I think I was a lot more scared about it than I, I don't even know what I was scared of. Not like I was gonna die or anything like that. I was just worried about it. Like I feel excited about the future again. I'm beginning to believe that one day I will be able to walk again. I think that was the biggest issue that I was beginning to like lose hope that I would ever be able to do anything ever again. You know, even though I knew that that wasn't gonna be the case, it just was this crushing feeling of, I am never going to get out of this place. And I think by having surgery, I was finally able to like 
move forward, do something about what was going on. And now that that's done, I feel a lot more freedom and I feel a lot more hopeful. On a side note, I think admitting hopelessness and like owning darkness and negative feelings and all of that ick is a really effective way to get it to go away. I had a conversation with someone in the comment section talking about the power of, of words, the power of speaking things out, and I fully believe in that. When we keep things in, when we you know stuff it all down, it festers and it grows, and if we can just bring it out into the open and be like, this is what I feel. I feel completely hopeless. I feel like nothing's ever gonna work out ever again. Even though that feels like a weak thing to say, weak thing to admit, suddenly those feelings aren't so powerful inside us anymore, you know? I hope that makes sense. I think by being honest with myself and by everyone listening to me, by my family and my friends listening to me and also all of you guys listening to me, I was able to kind of work through a lot of that hopelessness and now I'm feeling a lot better. So thank you guys. Long story short, so far so good. It's weird waking up in the middle of the night with your hands covered in blood, but frankly, it worked out just fine. So uh, all's well that ends well. I hope wherever you guys are in the world that you are as cozy as little cakes is on this bundle of blankets and that the day is treating you wonderfully. I'm thinking about you guys, I love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. My cat is on my phone. Hello. Are you guarding my phone? Can I see it? Can I have this ice pack? I need it. I need this ice pack. Hand her from the sky, all about it, down the river high tide.